Sega's crackdown on Genesis, although it's an original work of Sega, it was actually localized by the ill-fated Sega's creation care of Hot B, circa 1990, or 91 if you prefer. And must I mention this is a port of the original 89 arcade counterpart? Send the 21st century, aka, uh, I don't know, right fucking now, two special service agents by the name of Ben Breaker and Andy Attacker are under orders from the federal government to infiltrate the mad scientist Mr. X's, aka Mr. K's, multi-level base. Apparently, he's hellbent on dramatic pause, imminent to ass world domination, by creating a huge cybernetic goat demon, aka the athlete dubbed Artificial Life System. Before I continue on, this title is in no way related to the Xbox Game Trilogy by Microsoft, in association with the already defunct Real Time Worlds, Ruffian Games Limited, aka Rockstar Dundee in Scotland, and Sumo Digital. Disclaimer aside, in terms of gameplay, what if the short-lived Hudson's Bomberman and Konami's Metal Gear suddenly managed to tie the knot and eventually fuck themselves sideways? It's more or less a deadly race against time and an ongoing struggle against the impending odds, as both Ben and or Andy, of whom you're in control within each and every maze, planting all of the time bombs on the X-marked areas and obliterating the piss out of every adversary in the way while the timer is constantly taking down in sync with the bombs you install. Should either Ben and or Andy endure any physical hardships, whether being struck down, having any caps popped in their strong-willed asses, or exposed to any environmental threats, consider yourself fucked down one life. In terms of the customary control setup, the D-pad lets the two advance and evade any and all danger anywhere to their content and intuition, while A, B, and C, which, as expected, can be swapped around in the options menu beforehand, allows them to swap between their main machine guns and exploding cannons, fire off said armaments, and or land close-range blows with their bare hands or well-dressed feet, even after running out of ammo, and set off their super bombs, four or less of which you start off with, but can be restocked at any time, likewise for the 40 machine gun bullets and 10 cannon rounds, individually. As you're stalking throughout and infiltrating each structure, the previously recounted X-marked areas are automatically planted by Ben and or Andy's time bombs whenever you approach them, hence the main overall goal of each stage. When all the bombs are planted, the red dots on the map atop the display disappear, and you're free to proceed to the next maze if you reach and plant every remaining pre-marked area before the timer runs out. Speaking of which, the four-tier stage display is made up of the status and UI details of both agents placed on either side of the map, with a more detailed action taking place in the bottom two panels if you're playing in two-player mode, and if you're playing solo, only the second player's panel is being replaced by a layout of every target adversary that's more than likely to pursue your ass and make you their bottom bitch at even a moment's notice. And while we're on the subject of adversaries, enemies that is, there's a shit ton of them, and way too many to classify no less. All ranging from proto-army soldiers, jokers, yeah, as if we're going there today. <laughs> and hell army soldiers skilled in basic close-range martial arts. Replicants army soldiers and multicolored panthers lightly packed with a single gun. Mad murderers and tomahawks armed with machine guns and other miscellaneous armaments. High throwers armed with flame blasters, or as many may prefer, flamethrowers. Suicide bombing crash soldiers that arbitrarily emerge out of fucking nowhere and blow themselves the Christ up on contact. Tate Ken soldiers armed with both a sword and shield. Wall carters armed with high powered chainsaws. <laughs> to ravenous guard animals, including the Amasunio and Mandro, resembling both a dog and ape respectively, and a bevy of attack mechanisms, including the Mega Mara and Dizzy Metal, and experimental threats, including the living, shape shifting artificial bio seeds, and Robot K, the droid doppelganger of the main antagonist. 
Adding to these are the ongoing, unpredictable as shit, mind-raping myriad of structural hazards and threats that'll also trip your ass up and send you into an irreversible ass case of panic if you're not keen enough. Select examples include the non-stop, heavy-duty wrecking ball and three floating platforms looming over the bottomless pit in Stage 2 Act 1, the deteriorating ground and barriers that can be transformed into support platforms upon blasting them down in the next area, wired floors with sparks emitting at random, and even conveyor belts in single platforms, some of which connect to bottomless pits and or vats of sludge, acid, or even worse, fucking lava, plus barriers that summon electric sparks in later stages. The usual cautionary waxing aside, the controls are, as many may expect, offhand, clear-cut, and primary for Ben and Andy's overall objectives, despite the arbitrary instances where their strategies never work in your favor, specifically the latter half of their 16-level mission, or earlier, where the countless cast of terrorists and plethora of hazards can really fuck up your perfect day and or night, or so I'm more than fucking willing to admit. And the less I convey about the also primary, albeit negligibly plotting, gameplay procedure, the better. In regards to Crackdown's challenge, well, it seems to be rather welcoming from the get-go. You know, the usual Bugs Bunny, Mickey Mouse, Mario, Alex Kidd, and Sonic shit. Expect an endless, inescapable multiverse, no, no, scratch that, inescapable macrocosm of motherfuckery down the line, as this game will tear out your fucking brains, kidneys, and cartilage to be used as ingredients for a cannibal special artery wellington. As I've alluded to regarding Ben and Andy's ongoing operations in terms of planting one time bomb after another in the bases, junkyard and rooftops, high security facilities, and Mr. K's secret laboratory, those never-ending adversaries and threats will stop at fuck all to ensure they all result in one persistent fail-fest after another. Even as the clock ticks down in sync with every pre-planted bomb, there's always the possibility of these very same assailants and hazardous speed bumps impeding the shit out of your progress, which is why it's imperative to make every effort in invading, wasting said assailants before they do the same, you know, the usual shoot first, ask questions later spiel, and escaping the structures post haste upon planting the final bomb and viewing the progressing cutscenes, serving as transitions to the next stage, and so on, with the latter occurring at the end of every fourth act, except for the fourth and final area in stage four, during which you're tasked with pursuing and assassinating Mr. K's mysterious scheming ass. I mean, talk about risk versus reward. Oh, and speaking of the latter, the quicker you pass each and every enclosure after installing the explosives, the more extra points you'll rack up, guaranteeing the possibility of being awarded an extra life. Starting off with 1 to 6 of them, the lives that is, and up to 4 continues, and for the sake of playing Doctor, don't get too discouraged should the worst case scenarios in any excruciating in-game situation overwhelm you to the point of a possible nervous breakdown, as the overall bulk of what I've advised should sink in as quick as Alka-Seltzer dissolving in your favorite beverage before hitting the sack. Either way, all random metaphors aside... <laughs> On the graphical forefront, as opposed to its high-resolution arcade counterpart, the console-exclusive presentation is nothing more than a hodgepodge-ass mixed bag in terms of figuring out the overall layouts of Mr. K's four-domain compound to ensure the success of Ben and Andy's overall mission without suffering any casualties whatsoever, notwithstanding how often the latter can occur if your attrition expertise happens to take a long, endless goddamn dive into epic fail territory, and whose chances are greater than, say, making out with Margot Robbie during a sunrise. However, everything's not as complicated thanks to the provided randomly generated maps at the top. What's more, all the participating characters move at a dramatically agile pace, despite the occasional slowdown that persistently takes effect at random intervals, and as insipid and irksome as the cutscenes appear to be, save for the random close-up scenes during every stage whenever the individual time bombs are planted, not only are they close enough to the original arcade as the designers intended, they far beyond succeeded admirably, and Jesus Christ eloping with Molly Ringwald and Ali Sheedy did they succeed admirably. Music and sound-wise, orchestrated by an undisclosed entity and or group under the pseudonym of Mega Noise, based on Yasuhiro Kawakami's original arcade soundtrack. Then again, it might just be Kawakami himself acting under Mega Noise, but who gives a shit? Prior to the latter joining Square, now Square Enix, co-composing Final Fantasy Mystic Quest alongside Ryuji Sasai, and later joining Warner Music Japan,
The accompanying set of themes, while lacking in variety and significance, are appropriate and fitting enough for the entirety of the comprehensive yet gripping tribulations the two Secret Service operatives are bound to sustain at every turn. The voiceover sound bites, while minimal and leaving more than necessary to be desired, are also adequate, and to be specific, not only the title announcement at the start, but also when Ben and or Andy inadvertently get their asses wasted due to user error, and during the epic final pursuit and confrontation against Mr. K himself, likewise for the participating sound effects, which I'm beyond certain many can do without. In all fairness, take note of my top 5 song choices shown here. Replayability-wise, feel free to refer back to what I discussed regarding the emphasis on risk versus reward, and even the importance of carrying out the agent's infiltration missions in consummate record time, since I'd rather shit 85 million times in a park fountain during an endless hailstorm singing Witchfinder General, Social Distortion, Slipknot and Puddle of Mud and Klingon back-to-back -back, than to uncontrollably reiterate every single goddamn detail to the ultimate inevitable-ass brink of apathy. But besides that, there's fuck all else to comment on whatsoever, and you owe it to yourself to indulge in one of the most overlooked, albeit exhilarating, espionage-themed titles ever to grace Sega's fourth-generation console. Therefore, if I were you, I wouldn't even so much as miss out on the explosive, impactful, take-no-prisoners world of Crackdown. Henceforth, one and all, my final verdict, there are absolutely no words, no goddamn words to convey how much I recommend the hell out of Sega's kick-ass, bar none, adrenaline-infused, no-turning-back, top-view-running-gun title, which makes even Overwatch look like Stern Electronics Berserk, and will definitely run you from 15 bucks to as high as 160 big ones, shit if more, according to recent auction projections. All monetary info aside, what the hell are you waiting for, the release of John Wick 5? Get your ass out there and nuke all kinds of shit into total oblivion time and time again with Crackdown. And let me assure you one and all, there shouldn't be a single solitary shred of boredom or lament whatsoever doing so. And GOD HELP THOSE WHO THINK OR BELIEVE OTHERWISE! Until then, this is the one and only Hardcore Retro Guide, once again triumphantly signing off.